Okay folks, you may remember yesterday I was testing the slug through the R10. I'd slightly tuned it up from it was shooting to around 9.8 with the slugs. I gave it one full turn of the hammer, spring screw and brought it up to about 10 and a half foot pounds. What I'm doing now, I'm going to test three pellets through it, different weights, uh, to see if it's still within the legal limit because I think the slugs are something like 4.9 four diameter. Uh, pallet might fit the barrel batter and shoot more powerfully so uh, at the moment I've got the Crossman Premiers in at 10.5 foot pounds, uh, 10.5 grains and we'll see how it goes on those. So then, shot one. 11.1 Okay, so they're doing fine on that. Uh, that's a ten and a half grain uh, Crossman Premiers. Uh, okay. So next one up will be the eight point four four grain Day State Field Target. Now they don't make these anymore, but. Uh, I did happen to have some. So these are 8.44 grains. 11.7. Mm. 11.6. No. Nope. 11. I shot there, I thought it was the last one at 11.9, so that shows that I cannot adjust this uh, ammo spring anymore, and that just goes to prove that the heavier slugs at 13 grains and the Crossman Premiers at 10.5 grains, although they're heavier, these obviously, the uh, day states, fit the barrel a lot better, so they're more efficient. So there's no way that I would adjust this any more now to bring the power up because uh, we've found a pellet that uh, more or less comes to the edge of the limit there. So uh, the last one will be Bisley Magnum. Uh, these are normally an accurate pellet and normally give good results but we'll see. If anything's going to take it over it might be these uh, in which case I'll have to bring the power down again. But uh, this is what you do craniographing for, and it just goes to prove that it's not always the obvious pellet that brings you the best power. It's all down to the fit of the barrel to that pellet or slug. 
Just change the uh, settings. There we go, then, shot one. 11. Point. 4. 11. Point. 6. 11. Point. 6. 11. Point. 6. Eleven point eight. Eleven point nine. Eleven point seven. Eleven point five. Eleven. Point seven. Well, I think that was it. Okay, then, so that's task complete. The rifle is tuned, it's uh, been fitted with a, a tench regulator that uh, Phil Crampton uh, did at the Rat Works initially for uh, John Kemp, who I bought it off, he's one of our club members. So, because it's regulated, I'm not too worried now. Uh, Obviously, I've not, uh, well, it's not obviously, I've not weighed any of the pellets it's straight out of the tin. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to adjust it anymore. But it just goes to show that 8.44 pellet in, in grains is just as efficient as the Bisley Magnum at 10.65 grains and the Crossman Premiers at 10.5 grains. So you must be aware of that and that's why you should always uh, check a medium light and heavy pellet when you're doing your chronographing tests. So uh, I will not adjust it anymore now. So the slugs are pushing out 10 and a half foot pounds but uh, through this one. But bearing that in mind, if you remember the gas ram, I was only achieving about 7.8 foot pounds. So the, the slugs, were, although they weren't efficient in the barrel, at 20 yards, if you look at the uh, impact results, you don't need a lot of power to, c to create a mass expansion of that slug. Uh, so uh, it's a funny sort of science, but uh, that's it for today anyway. Have you been interested in that little short video on uh, making sure that uh, your gun's within legal limits, which this one is. So. Uh, in the next video, I'll be uh, servicing my new Warrior compressor. Well, not servicing, I'll be doing an oil and filter change. If it needs servicing after it's been done, I will go back to that. But uh, we'll see how it performs after the next oil change anyway. So we'll catch you in that video next. Thanks for watching.